Hi, this is Linda Wood Rondo bringing you another my favorite verse off the cuff, just me and the power of God's word. Today I'm going to talk about Romans 9, 20 to 21, and then I'm going to read you a short story that kind of relates to this. Who are you to a human to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? This inspired me to write a little short story called The Masterpiece. And I'm going to read it to you now and hope you'll stay with me till you hear the ending. I was created for a noble cause. I believe this from the beginning. With loving patience, Giovanni transformed me from imperfect, undefined clay into the finest porcelain in all of Italy. With his own gnarled hands, he molded me on his wheel for service and splendor. He covered me with oils of blues and greens, a coat of polished perfection. When persuaded what he created was worthy of completion, he put me through the final fire. And with such pleasure, he inspected his work, aided by noon's sunlight. Good, he proclaimed. It's very good, fit for a queen. And so I came into being, not an ordinary earthen jar, but a boss of importance, destined to be the possession of royalty. Yet, inexplicably, I remained on the potter's shelf, hidden from the patrons in search of common wear who frequented Giovanni's workshop. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, I pondered at the meaning of my abandonment. I was destined to rest on the monarch's table, bearing witness to the genius that made me. Months turned into years, and still I remained apart and secreted. Was this to be my end? Was I so delicately crafted only to decay from purposelessness? When it seemed as if time could no longer be measured, Giovanni at last appeared, and he rescued me from my ruinous state, covered me with his polishing cloth, and restored my former gloss. Like an offering to the Most High, he raised me toward the upper window, Hues of aqua and marine burst into the room as the sun's rays broke through. It is still good, he nodded in approval. Rosetta will be pleased. Was I finally to be, to be released from this graveyard of uselessness? Giovanni cradled me in his hands, transporting me from obscurity to a long-awaited unveiling. And he brought me along a cobbled path into a white, simple cottage, his home. He filled me with emptiness. He filled my emptiness with cool waters from his well, then set me upon a splintered table, adorning me with velvety roses. And he carried me past a thistle grove into a green meadow that stretched like a carpet before a mound of sculptured granite. Engraved with seraphim and cherubs, the stone was inscribed with a single word, Rosetta. He placed me on an adjacent pedestal. While a salty tear dropped from his cheek, he knelt beside his beloved's resting place, declaring, for you, my Rosetta, my wife, my love, my queen. <clears throat> it was at this moment I realized the truth of my creation. My destiny was not the admiration of sovereigns. My purpose was a testament to a love undiminished by death, a token of his veneration for she who held his heart. With each dawn, Giovanni faithfully replenishes my contents with Rosetta's favorite flower. And above all artifacts made by the potter's hand, I have been chosen to bear his tribute. With honor such as this, I am now complete. And I want you to think today what God has created you for. He has a singular purpose for you and created you for a special purpose. 
Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.